concentration. Hi everyone, welcome to Master Animation with Micros. I am Manju, Sathya Singh, your supervisor at Micros Animation. My entry into the uh, animation industry can be tracked back to my artistry roots. I have done my EFA and MFA from College of Fine Arts, Japan, and I have completed my 15 years in Technicolor. I started my journey as a junior texture artist at Technicolor, and then gradually I moved it to a lead, and then now I'm working as a supervisor. I managed a team around 30, art 30 texture artists. So today I'll be uh, talking about texturing and colors. Hi, I'm Namya. I'm a 3D modeling artist at Micros Animation. I have done my Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science. I have worked as a software engineer for two years before I quit the IT industry and uh, did my PG diploma for a year uh, in animation. And then um, it has been a little over five years since I started my journey as a 3D artist. So art was basically a hobby for me since I was a child. And that is what motivated me to uh, switch my career from the IT industry to the animation industry. So today I'll be talking about stylized character modeling and how to go about creating characters that are full of life. So a character's journey starts when a concept artist put their pen and paper together to create a beautiful concept art. So as a 3D modeling artist, before going into a 3D software and getting busy with the tools in creating the model, we need to understand the concept that has been provided to us. So there are a few steps and few points that need to be kept in mind uh, with, uh, when we analyze the concept art. And I'll be taking you through a few of these steps today. So the first point we need to consider is uh, know your character. When I say know your character, I mean what is the backstory of the character? Where is the character from, origin of the character? And what is the personality of the character? Is it a happy-go-lucky character or a sad character? Or is it a rebellious character? And also we need to consider the role of the character in the movie or show. So these are the few points which actually let us imagine the character in various scenarios in the show and decide what sort of feel as well as details that have to be added into the character model. So apart from this, uh, the second point we need to talk about is uh, preparing a reference board or a, a sometimes called a mood board. So a reference board will act as a guide uh, for you to model your character. A board should contain uh, references such as um, plot details, the type of anatomy, character style, or uh, all the accessories the character has or type of hair the character has. So apart from the, these uh, references, we also can add a few uh, references uh, for your benchmark. So this will determine uh, what sort of look at feel you want to go to when you finish the uh, character model. So while you work on your reference board, uh, there is one more thing that you can actually do to get inspiration from. That is watch already existing movies, shows and series. There are unlimited movies out there and personally I feel that every time I re-watch a movie, I feel like I have discovered something new which I missed in the previous uh, watch. So I honestly recommend watching all the existing movies to get inspired from. So the next part of understanding concept art is analyzing the art principles that have been applied in the concept art. The first uh, art principle I'll be talking about is line of action. So a line of action can be uh, thought of as an imaginary line that runs through the spine of the character or concept. So the more curve you put into the line of action, more attitude, more personality the character will portray towards the audience. So. Um, Understanding the uh, line of action uh, will actually provide you an understanding of what the character's personality is, physical appearance is, and sometimes also the mental state of the character. For example, if a character is very happy, he might be standing very upright with his shoulders proud. 
Uh, in the meantime, if a character is sad, he might be hunched down with his shoulders drooping down. So basically, understanding the line of action will help you understand the personality of your character. The second point to note is uh, basic proportions and uh, some simple shapes that the concept art can be broken down into. When creating a concept art, the concept artist puts some shape principles into the uh, character to make it more believable. And a uh, few of the concept, a uh, few of the shape principles are: um, if 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 it is a circle, it means it is a lovable and friendly character. If it is a triangle, uh, it is a very dangerous and active character. And if it is a square, it is a very stable character. So most of the times, our uh, all the concept arts that we get are a combination of these basic uh, shapes, and it will actually help us if we understand the shape principles that have been applied. So the next point to talk about is anatomy and stylized anatomy is basically a toned down version of the actual human or an animal anatomy. Uh, and sometimes concept artists also break the anatomy to make the character more aesthetic. Uh, along with anatomy, if you uh, understand the design language of the character as well, it will give you an understanding of what sort of details have to be added for the anatomy. For example, a character might have sharper details or it might, uh, they, it might have a very rounder aesthetic. So as a character modeler, uh, it is very important to have knowledge about anatomy to make very believable characters. And I know that anatomy is a very long topic and it will take uh, a lot of time to understand and implement the topics. But as a stylized modeler, it is very important to know a few major landmarks as well as surface breaks that actually create the shapes of the body. And there are a few artists out there who have made this learning uh, a little bit easier and I would really like you guys to go and check out Anatomy for Sculptors um, and a few Anatomy Blockings by Sheen Olsen and also uh, Stylized Anatomy by uh, Mitch Lewy. So the next point is Silhouette. Silhouette is basically the exact shape of the character or element when represented by a solid color. And typically the solid color is black. And concept artists, when they create uh, the characters, they test the character's uh, memorability by uh, using silhouette a lot of times. Um, so a silhouette actually tells us what a character's form is telling us without getting distracted from all the details and all the colors of the concept art. You need to keep in mind that the stronger the silhouette, the more memorable your character. So the next point to talk about is exaggeration. Uh, an exaggeration is basically taking a character's personality, physical traits and ma making them so big that it goes beyond the limit of our natural lives. And sometimes it involves stretching, distorting and making sure that this adds appeal to the character. Understanding how the character has been exaggerated, what parts of the character concept has been exaggerated, helps us bring the character uh, out into the world in a better way. So these are some of the art principles that get applied uh, into the concept art uh, most of the times. And each of these are a big topic on their own. And I would suggest you guys to go and read two books which have helped me a lot. One is A Drawn to Life by Ward Stanchfield. And the other is uh, Animator's Survival Kit by Richard Williams. These two books have helped me understand uh, art principles in a better way and I hope it will actually help you guys too. So by keeping a checklist of all these art principles, you can start your modeling process. But keep in mind that all these principles have to be revisited to make sure that whatever you decided in the beginning are being achieved throughout your modeling process. So once we have made sure that we have read the concept art properly, we can, we can start our modeling process by using one or all of the following uh, points. The first point is uh, blocking. And uh, when we start the blocking, we, the first thing we do is a basic camera match. And I generally use eyes as anchor points to make sure that I get the uh, perspective and all the aspects of the character properly. The second point uh, to make sure while blocking is use uh, basic primitives and use as much low poly as possible. And basically the, uh, the point of this uh, stage is to make sure that we are getting the proportions of the character properly and strictly no detailing at this stage. So the second point is adding primary forms. 
So in this stage, we block out all the elements that the character has. For example, it could be uh, the costume, the shoes, the hair, or any accessories that the character concept has. So in this stage, we need to make sure that the silhouette of the concept is matching exactly to our model. After the primary forms are added, the, the third point that we make sure is uh, the secondary forms. And in this stage, we add all the details, basically the minor details, probably uh, small wrinkles around the eyes or around the mouth or a few uh, hair clumps, extra hair clumps and a few wrinkles on your cloth. Uh, in stylized character modeling, we generally stop at uh, secondary forms as the tertiary details, for example, the skin and pore details are taken care by the texturing department. So the fourth point uh, is pose for presentation. Uh, once your character is internally uploaded, we uh, pose a character similar to the concept art. And uh, while posing the character, we make sure that uh, we keep in mind the balance, the silhouette, composition, and expressions if there are any expressions on the concept art. So the final part of the uh, character modeling process is once your character has been finally approved, you need to make a uh, character production ready. And to do that, there are two parts uh, that happen. And the first part uh, is uh, mesh QC and the second part is file QC. When we do the mesh QC, we need to make sure that the loops are in accordance with our rigging and texturing department uh, requirements. We need to make sure that uh, there are no end curves. We need to make sure that the loops are proper for the blend shapes and so on and so forth. There are quite a bit of uh, list that goes on in Mesh QC. After the Mesh QC is done, we go on to the File QC where we make sure that there are no uh, unknown nodes, add controllers to the uh, uh, file and also uh, make sure that the naming convention has been set properly. Once all the QC is done, the file is passed on to the next uh, departments for rigging or texturing. Imagine a world without colors. Isn't it lifeless? The same applies for 3D world. A 3D model would look boring and lifeless without textures. Textures give life to a 3D model by giving colors and surface details to it. Texturing workflow involves UV unwrapping, texture creation, shading, and rendering. There are three divisions in texturing. Character, environment or set, and prop texture. And uh, cartoonistic, realistic, semi-realistic, and stylized are the different styles of texturing. Let's talk about colors. Colors are the basic element of art that involves light. Color harmonies are certain combinations of color which are pleasing to the eyes and work well together. Let's explore six color harmonies. Monochromatic colors. It's a variation of one single color getting lighter and darker. For example, the silhouette of the deer in this painting is drawing the attention of the viewers with a background painted with different tints and shades of brown. That's monochromatic. The colors opposite to each other on the color wheel are complementary colors, such as red and green, yellow and purple, or orange and blue. For example, in this painting, tints of red are there on the rose with green leaves around it and in the other painting, the sky is yellowish with purple mountains which gives a striking contrast. Split complementary colors. A split complementary color scheme is created by selecting one color from the color wheel and then using one color from the other side of the complementary color. It involves three colors. For example, in this painting, Purple and yellowish orange are used in the sky and yellowish green is used for the, for the grass plants which gives a lively and joyous feel. Analogous colors. Analogous colors are three groups of colors that are next to each other in the color wheel. This color combination is versatile and can be seen a lot in nature. These colors create a visually pleasing and calming display. In this example of the tea plantation painting, blue sky with green foliage with yellow-green highlights are used, which is cohesive. And in the misty pine tree, blue-purple and bluish-purple are used, which is pleasing to the eyes. Triadic colors. Three colors that are evenly spaced on the color wheel. Triadic color combinations tend to be quite vibrant. In this painting, orange and violet is used in the sky and foliage is in green, which is triadic. Tetralic colors. Tetralic colors are also called double complementary colors. 
This color scheme uses four colors together in the form of two sets of complementary colors. It can be used as foreground and background. For example, in this painting of Chinese Central, the main color is the red building where the eyes are wood drawn to. Next to it are the desaturated green trees. Red and green are the pair in the foreground. And the desaturated orange sky with the blue building in the background is the second pair giving a nice pleasing look. The following skills are required to become a texture artist. First one is a painting skill. At least a basic knowledge of painting is an added advantage. And a knowledge of uh, shading is required. Experience in current painting tools such as substance and mari is important. And uh, the artist should have a, a understanding of skin in animals and humans plus uh, buildings and fabrics, etc. We receive only a color art from clients and we are matching uh, the textures with the material reference given from client here. It's important to do a texture from scratch so that we can achieve the quality. UV unwrapping and mapping is also important to become a texture artist. This is how the texturing workflow in production goes. Firstly, we check the animatic sense to report to understand the acting area of the set and characters action in the shot. Then we discuss with the modeling and rigging team before the model is built. After the model is built and approved, UV cut wrapping process starts. Once the UV is done, we publish the UV file to the rigging department to start with the rigging. Parallelly, we start with texturing the model. Once the texture is done, we proceed with the shading and rendering of the asset to match with the color art. After matching with the color art, quality check must be done for the asset. Finally, we do the publish and upload. Basically, we use Maya in uh, production. We started using Blender and Unreal Engine as well. For texturing, we use uh, Mari Substance and Photoshop as our texturing tools. Plus, we use some uh, internal tools developed by our CG team for UV unwrapping as well. We use V-Ray, Redshift and Unlawed Render Engines here. There are four processes in texturing. First is UV unwrapping and mapping. The second is texture creation, then texture mapping and shading. UV unwrapping an object is almost always required unless you intend to use procedural textures. The number of UDMs and the resolution of the asset is fixed in the UV stage. The number of UDMs are fixed in the UV stage by setting up the resolution of the asset. UV resolution of the characters is fixed by checking the render output quality. While setting up the UV resolution of the environment, it's important to reference the character into the set and compare the character and set resolution. Texture artist starts with the texture creation once the UV is created. Uh, textures can be done in different ways, such as hand painting, procedural, image based, etc. The hand painting textures can be done directly on the 3D model by using software such as Mari, Substance Painter, etc. Procedural textures are mathematically generated and can be created on the fly for infinite resolution and pattern. Substance Painter is an incredibly powerful 3D painting software. Its advanced procedural texturing tools allows you to create much complex textures in less time. Also, you can use the smart materials which are presets and substance for a whole layer stack. It contains effects and layers that work on different meshes with baked maps. Either the existing smart material can be used and edited aesthetically get to get the desired output or custom made materials can be created and used for multiple files. You can edit your textures in real time in Substance Painter and know exactly what your texture will look like in the end. All the texture maps will be exported in EBR format in Substance Painter so that it will import straight into a render engine with the same results from Substance. Image-based textures can be created with high-resolution real-life real, real -life photograph images. This is mostly used in realistic style of texturing. During environment texturing, 
The objects which is closer to the camera are given more importance by giving detailed textures with a high resolution for extreme close-ups and objects which are far away and background elements are given less importance by not giving much detail in texture so that we could render quality output without wasting much time. On the other hand, for character texturing, triplets property in skin shader plays a vital role to give a fleshy look but triplets can also impact the render time. We could cut down the triplets by adding triplets map which will reveal only the areas where we need subsurface and lower all the other areas so that we can reduce render time. There are different types of maps such as color map, bum map, displacement map, novel map, roughness map, metalness map, etc. In simple words, texture mapping can be defined as wrapping a 2D image over a 3D object so that we can get the information such as color, normal, displacement, bum, roughness, metalness over a 3D object. We can use a uh, different mapping like you can use a tidable map or a UV-based map so that if you use a tidable map, you can adjust the parameters such as tile, rotation, offset, etc. After texturing an object, we start with the shading. Many real-world materials such as plastic, wood, metal, glass can be represented with 3D materials. Shaders can control how the surface of the object interacts with light and it can determine the color, shininess, bumpiness, smoothness, transparency, reflection, emission, etc. with a set of parameters. The material controls the parameters. There are different kinds of renderers and the material will change from renderer to renderer. Depending on the color art, we create a shader by adding either image page texture maps or by using procedural textures. By using a procedural shader, we can easily reuse it for different objects in the scene and it can be easily edited. Procedural shading is very useful for environment or set dictionary to get an output with infinite variety and resolution. There are specific light rigs created by our lighting department for each project with render settings which are used while creating the shader. Finally, the turnaround renders are taken after finishing the shader. Collaboration between modeling and texturing departments starts at the as it build stage itself. So as a modeling artist, we need to make sure that our models have proper loops so as to facilitate the UV process. Uh, along with that, we need to make sure that there are if there are items which are similar and that need to be duplicated, we need to make sure that the first item is unwrapped before it gets duplicated. So this will actually save a lot of time for the texturing team. Apart from that, uh, there is uh, also one more thing that the texturing uh, department helps us with. That is, they uh, give us basic designs uh, in case uh, the modeling artists need to sculpt. So uh, we take the designs and base our sculpts uh, out of these designs. So Andre, anything else that you would like to add on? Yes, yes, I would like to add one more point. Like we collaborate with the modeling team to export the sculpt details from the, for the displacement because that sculpt details can be used as a displacement map in your shader. So that help is always taken from modeling team. We use procedural network in our workflow to handle huge sets with hundreds of elements in it. Because hand painting for such sets is difficult to manage the textures and uh, the texture time also will increase. It's not an optimized way of working. So procedural textures comes on handy for this kind of uh, assets. You can go for a layer texture method or you can use a redshift color layer node to create layer textures uh, for example if you want to create a stylized texture for a rock you can go for a tileable texture on the base like a first layer can have a tileable texture with a triplater projection and on top of that you can add another layer which will have a stripe on it with the contrast and on top of that you can add one more mask layer a layer on top of it with color variation. It will give a color variation for the texture and on top of that you can add one more layer to break the continuity. This way you can achieve higher textures for the close-up renders. Plus you can enhance the textures by giving more displacement map to it 
by adding a 32 bit displacement map which is uh, already exported from zbrush can definitely bring high detail textures you can go for it and you can add a blend node to blend both if you're adding two displacement maps you can blend both the displacement map and also you can get more detailed textures through this method this way we handle huge sets in our group so a degree in fine arts is not mandatory to be a 3d modeler but art plays a very very important role in what you what we do uh, so uh, and also along with uh, a passion for art, you need to have a lot of self-learning and personally I would suggest uh, uh, life drawing as well as gesture drawings uh, to improve your self creatively and uh, at the end of the day you need to be able to put all that learning into a digital software uh, and that's where uh, the actual work happens and that's what we have been doing. While texturing, you can export a uh, normal map from ZBrush and import the same normal map into Substance Painter before baking your mesh maps. This will give you all the minute details such as wrinkles and uh, uh, the crack details. This you can do with the lowest mesh, but uh, you still you will get all the displacement details which you already sculpted in ZBrush. This saves you from exporting the high-res mesh into Substance Painter and also you will get the displacement details without wasting much time which will help with your AO and uh, curvature wakes. Use smart materials from Substance Painter so that you can use it for multiple files and you can save your time as well. And also use terrible maps with mask map to get high resolution textures. You can also combine displacement map and bum map in a single file by giving finer details in the bum map and for the larger details you can give a displacement map. So I hope this uh, session was informative and I hope you guys will venture into 3D character modeling a lot more from now on. And like I said before, follow your passion for art as much as possible and uh, make sure that you are self-learning at all times. There are a lot of resources out there. There are a lot of people who have actually done this uh, already. So you just need to follow them and make sure that you add up, add upon uh, with your own inspiration. A combination of strong aesthetic and technical skill is very much important to become a successful texture artist. Pursuing a fine arts degree is not mandatory, but it can give you a foundation to understand the aesthetics and artistic importance in, cre in, form in creating a great animation show. When you should be a good observant. You can observe a lot from nature around you. And uh, uh, each artist is different. Their imaginations are different. They observe differently. So their observations and imaginations can combine together to form a unique artwork. Keep practicing and keep developing your skills. Watch out for the next episode of Master Animation with Petros. <laughs>